everyone. My name is Francine Sayok from the International Seed Federation. We are continuing with our video series on the status of seed movement globally. And this time we will be getting insights directly from the regions and the countries on how the COVID-19 crisis has impacted the industry. We are fortunate to have with us three very special guests. And let me ask them to please introduce themselves. Let's start with Justin and then Lukeshni and then Riyad. My name is Justin Rakutu Arison. I'm the Secretary General of the African Seed Trade Association based in Nairobi, Kenya. Chesi, I'm General Manager of the South African Seed Organization in Pretoria, South Africa. Hello, Francine. Thank you. I'm Riyad Gapsi. I'm President of the Tunisian Seed Association past president of the African Seed Trade Association and member of the board of ISF. Thank you very much. I'd like to start off with an overview of the status of seed movement. Just briefly, how do you assess the overall situation? And let's start with Justin on a continental level and then with Lukeshni and Riyadh from a country perspective. Thank you, Francine. Uh, the continent of Africa that is not an exception uh, from this pandemic. And uh, we know that it's going to impact negatively the, the continent, I mean, the seed industry. And uh, once we know that, as uh, everybody knows, the National Seed Trade Association is playing a very crucial role. So we sent to them uh, the message saying, please keep communicating, keep negotiating with the seed regulator so that uh, the seed movement is not hindered at national level and at regional level. And uh, we also, uh, because Africa has this uh, special trading bloc uh, called the Regional uh, Economic uh, Communities. I can mention COMESA for Eastern Southern Africa, SADEC for Southern Africa, ECOWAS for West Africa, and the uh, East African Community in East Africa. Then we write, a letter we wrote to them to say, please be aware of the fact that if seed movement is hindered by this pandemic, because people may be afraid of uh, transferring the disease, then we will not have food in the next six months. Uh, I can mention that uh, in Eastern and Southern Africa, it's harvesting time. And uh, in uh, West Africa, uh, the growing season will start by May. So uh, I can say that we already uh, uh, take kind of proactive approach so that uh, seed uh, is moving freely. And this is the case uh, in general manner, except at national level, there are some lockdown like town so in, uh, between the city. But as I said in the beginning, the National Seed Trade Association went ahead and negotiated and they got special uh, favor and seed is considered as an uh, essential service. So like the case in Kenya, at the lorry, uh, transporting seed is given a special sticker and they are allowed to move even the curfew is on. Same for Malawi, same for Tanzania. So they are all proactive. And uh, to keep the communication going on, we try to smooth it with uh, creating a WhatsApp group so that uh, we can help each other, support each other. Thank you. Africa, we are on day 29 of our lockdown with six more days to go. On May 1st, we will start um, lessening the restrictions. However, to date, I think we were fortunate in that we were able to engage with the Minister of Agriculture beforehand. And we were confident that agriculture and seed would be included as an essential good um, and allow the essential services for agriculture to continue. So we are still um, supplying seed to South African farmers and we are still um, doing our best to import and export seed at the moment. Thank you. Hey, uh, in Tunisia, we are in confinement in uh, lockdown uh, since the uh, 17th of March and it is now um, I think it ends on the 3rd of May so still a few uh, 10 days to, to, to finish 
uh, there is a limitation of circulation, of course, of population in Tunisia, and even uh, Kurfu from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So uh, circulation of people uh, is, is really very limited. Um, about the movement of seeds uh, point of view is um, a special situation, of course. We are working, uh, but with a lot of delays uh, in shipments, in import, in uh, clearing from the points of entry uh, at the work of the uh, MPPOs. So this is the general situation uh, today in Tunisia. Um, thank you for that. You mentioned some positive developments in the region, such as the recognition of seed as an essential service. Um, could you please elaborate on that and other things that you see as positive developments? Um, I'll start with Lukeshni this time. Thanks, Ramsine. So I, I think within the South African context, the entire agricultural value chain was considered an essential service. And you don't have a, an agricultural value chain without seed. And um, SANSO is the Seed Trade Association for South Africa, and we are still ensuring that seed, seed production continues. We are able to certify seed. We are able to, um, we were effectively able to ensure that our members received constant communication. Uh, regarding the lockdown regulations, which were changing all the time. I think this is a, a first for every country in the world, and South Africa itself also had to find her feet in this. Uh, thank you, Lukashni. In fact, in Tunisia, agriculture was considered, and of course, is considered as, as priority, and uh, hopefully, seeds, uh, together with other agricultural inputs uh, like fertilizers, ag 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 agrochemicals, irrigation material, have been considered as priorities. Uh, and personally, I had with a member of my uh, my, my board uh, meeting uh, face to face with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Minister of Agriculture, and we explained to him the importance of the seeds. In, in, in this in this chain and in, in agriculture and we even have a, a, a common meeting with other uh, colleagues from the agrochemicals and the fertilizers uh, sector together with the chef uh, cabinet, uh, chief cabinet of the minister of agriculture in order to try to uh, ask him and he did to help us to make uh, clearing and make movement of seeds and agricultural inputs in general uh, more fluid so um, especially because we are in a period of uh, um, vegetable plants, uh, nurseries work in, plant, in tomatoes and pepper, and this is really the high season. And uh, this was, uh, was possible uh, that we had more um, facilitate, facilities to, uh, to move the seeds and the plants around Tunisia. Um, we, uh, uh, also, we had the uh, possibility for getting as uh, agricultural inputs companies special permits from the beginning of the uh, lockdown, uh, uh, giving us the possibility uh, to circulate uh, and uh, to, to move around the country and try to make uh, our job. So we were able uh, to, uh, to, to make uh, uh, seeds and plants moving uh, with some delays, but uh, still moving. I would say that uh, the decision maker at regional levels are well aware of the fact that it's important to make sure that seed is available to farmers. For instance, last week there was a conference call for the ministers of agriculture for the ECOWAS, which stands for Economic Community of West African States, to agree that seed should move for farmers. This is in West Africa. In Comesa, Eastern and uh, uh, Southern Africa, they already uh, popularized, or I would say uh, they will, and they have done it again to uh, say to the member states, please don't hinder the movement of seed because it's crucial for its uh, over 400 million population. So uh, this is a positive development. And at national level, all the regulators are making an effort to ensure that there is no much delay despite the lockdown on the uh, certification of the seed so that they move in time. And uh, we continue sharing experiences 
And I would say that uh, due to this uh, special context, the seed industry is moving together and they're represented at national level by the National Seed Trade Association. And uh, this is harmonized and coordinated at the AFSTA level. Thank you. That's very good news. I'm sure we could all use every bit of good news during this time. Um